Hi all, let's look at game 9 now of the amazing Alpha Zero against Stockfish match. So in game 9 of the published paper recently, we see d4, e6, Alpha Zero playing white, Stockfish playing black. So French defence chosen by Stockfish, potentially, if it, it can transpose now and it does because white plays e4. We have a French defence by transposition. Knight c3, knight f6, e5, knight f d7, and now the classical variation f4, c5, knight f3. And now, usually in this position, knight c6 is played. Uh, but c takes d4 is in chess space live book and thought to be equal as well. It resolves that central tension. Players, it seems, prefer generally uh, to play like this knight c6 for example like this bishop e3 keeping that central tension and maybe even expanding on the queen side like this and this position when white takes here and bishop takes is thought to be about equal so we have this move which might be a little bit controversial knight b5 so white is not taking with this knight but instead preferring to try and establish a knight on d4 check bishop d2 and now bishop c5 b4 kicking the bishop back now if the bishop had gone here then maybe knight d6 check is very nice for white so the bishop keeps control of that d6 square knight b takes d4 knight c6 c3 protecting that b pawn a5 we have b5 now, knight takes, c takes, and white has this very nice pawn center, it seems, which deprives this knight of that key's c5 square. So white's got this space advantage. How significant is it here? Knight b6, we see a4, knight c4, and this knight's ignored. If white ever takes there, then black gets that lovely d5 square. So bishop d3, just letting the bishop go, potentially, and that is taken. There was a very good way for white to take here, and some less good ways. What would you take with here after knight takes d2? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. Okay. Well, queen takes d2 is out of the question because of bishop b4. And knight takes d2 is not that great, after bishop b4 and say castling then bishop c3 so say white has to play something like queen b3 this is quite pleasant for black this position it looks pretty awkward here uh for white so actually white took with the king believe it or not that solves the problems <laughs> significantly keeping white center intact that space advantage bishop d7 this bishop's a bit of a problem bishop. It's kind of locked in, not just with its own structure, but with this structure here. King e3, It's it seems very, very strange to play this way, the opening. But the king is a little bit safer on e3, away from any potential checks. And in fact, after b6, black doesn't castle. Maybe there's like a, a ready-made attack with h4, knight g5 here. Black actually, uh, yeah, so this b6 was played there. White plays g4 now. And black played here, h5. So a very, very interesting position. Queen g1, h takes, queen takes, hitting g7, that's protected. h4. So white's getting on with things on the king side here with the king on e3. Black seems to have very limited counterplay. Queen e7, rook hc1, g6. And now white, as though, is interested in uh, doubling rooks on the c file. King d8, rook ac1, queen e8. There's an infiltration point. It's toyed with here. But after rook c8, yeah, we have an exchange of rooks and another infiltration. But here, the black uh, black cleverly evicts this rook with bishop b7. 
at least cleverly in a tactical sense. If rook takes b6, then there's king c7. And this isn't particularly good for white to lose the exchange. For example, like this, it's it's going to be at least equal for black. So the rook just comes back here. White's pieces feel better, especially this bishop. It seems hemmed in by its own pawn chain. This bishop's more aggressive than that one. That bishop hasn't got too many targets either. That rook seemed more useful than the rook on h8. King d7, we have knight g5. And actually, there is a tactical idea emerging here of the knight g5, which is quite clever. Black played bishop e7. Now, let me just show you if black plays bishop a8. Tactical pop quiz here. What would you play with white in this position? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. Okay, bishop takes g6 is good. For example, like this, knight takes e6, smashes black to smithereens, basically. If queen takes e6, rook c7 check will win that queen under very favorable circumstances. Yeah, the queen's dominating the board there, and there's pawn inertia on, on the way. I mean, pawn mobility. <laughs> so knight g5, bishop e7 was played which would seem to address the tactical issues or does it can you guess what white plays here and this is absolutely remarkable this move here because it looks as though black is ready for bishop takes g5 on any bishop takes g6 but I guess what white plays okay <laughs> Bishop takes g6 is played anyway. Now clearly fg is a total disaster. Losing e6 and then just getting mated. Like that. Uh, so, but what about the snag? Bishop takes g5. Isn't this a slight snag? And this is just absolutely remarkable. White is sacrificing an entire piece here after queen takes g5, f takes, and for what, you might ask. It is a dangerous position for the black king, but there's a great move here. f5. Yeah, this is just incredibly dangerous, actually, for the black king. I'll give you a flavor. If bishop a8... Queen f6 with ideas of taking and rook c7 and also queen g7. So if, for example, here then taking and then we just win that rook, it's very difficult for black in this position, actually. So what happened after uh, f5? Rook g8 was played. But now... Queen h6, this is absolutely uh, remarkable stuff. So the rook has that kind of weakness of the last move is tapped into. The queen is now threatening queen h7. And if queen e7, then there's rook c7. Here's an example, just to put that on the board. Or even taking the rook. Yeah, e either would, have, would be good, <laughs> taking the rook as well. So yeah, there's a lot of menacing threats here. Black played queen f7. And now we see f6 installing a dangerous protected pass pawn. Is it worth an entire bishop though? So this is a fascinating position. Is it a French defense nightmare? Even a bishop with an extra bishop, the bad bishop, so to speak, is pretty bad here. What can black actually do to wriggle out of this position? Uh, we see king d8. And that's just a calm move, king d2, not really carrying it. It's a piece down or anything. There's, there's no immediate issues. Uh, rook c1 was played. Which gives some extra options like rook g1. And maybe h5. We see 
king d8 and now queen e3 with the option now of queen a3 to go into d6 queen f8 parries that queen a3 uh, for example if bishop a8 was played as a token move queen a3 just taking off the queens is actually a winning position for white here for example this scenario is just absolutely winning for white because this protected pass pawn is going to be queening that bishop's not going to really help <laughs> so so uh, this is uh, yeah incredible but uh, it's very very difficult for black here queen c3 threatening queen c7 check there's not much black can do here apart from stop that with queen b4 this is not ideal because it's creating another potential pass pawn on the queen side now after white takes so the potential with a5 to create a pass pawn so we'd have a pass pawn here and a pass pawn over here pass pawns on both sides of the board rook g1 though for the moment looks to have h5 in sight black plays b3 there's also an idea of king c2 to b3 just to round up this pawn and then play a5 so b3 looks like another kind of desperate move we've seen in this match which is just giving up pawn for not much in a very difficult position so white now is looking forward to creating another pass pawn over here so this is absolutely beautiful play on both sides of the board black's really just tied down and now rook a1 really just emphasizing a5 even more effective the rook crashing for on the queen side potentially now here if instead of king c7 g5 you might ask this is very nice white after a5 this position is just going to be winning with the king infiltrating like this it's just absolutely a winning scenario with that pawn just queening or winning the exchange there that's absolutely lost for black so yeah these are absolutely nightmare scenarios so king c7 a5 creating a pass pawn on the queen side yeah king c7 was tried and we have a similar thing the king's infiltrating now black's really tied down on both sides of the board so rook a2 the king's ready to go into e7 potentially if black's not careful and in fact check invites king d6 major infiltration with the king king e7 super aggressive king after g5 the game uh, ended here actually actually I think it was actually after king e7 that the game might have ended here but it looks absolutely desperate uh, for black I'll give you an example continuation here g5 takes king takes yeah with the black pawns falling we've got a massive connected past pawns on the way so this was an, this is an absolute nightmare scenario where these pass pawns are just simply winning yeah <laughs> so an absolutely gorgeous game showing some real downsides fundamental downsides of the french defense that the cramped nature of this variation especially if black releases the tension but but to be fair this c takes is not so popular in in chess based live book usually black keeps the tension so the opening book would have really maybe helped a little bit there for stockfish in this particular game a little bit because it seems as though after c takes d4 the counterplay for black were really was significantly reduced nevertheless the way this was exploited though with the king coming in the center and that peace sack is just profound the peace sack in this game we witness it absolutely profound creating a, a strong pass pawn over here which meant the bishop was kind of the extra bishop was futile in many variations and white was just simply threatening to infiltrate with the queen queen's coming off pass pawn over here as well and the king coming in on the dark squares which is an absolute classic against the french defense which weakens the dark squares so absolute classic effective strategy against the classic downsides of the french defense vividly demonstrated here with beautiful dynamic and positional play in my view i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you enjoyed the coverage generally of this these 10 games 
okay thanks very much and happy Christmas especially if you celebrate it I do being Greek Orthodox and happy new year when it comes so happy 2018 let's look forward to some more exciting computer chess next year thanks very much